Hello everyone, welcome to 360 on History. We are back after the holidays and ready to get on with it. Uh, please do check out the website 360onhistory.com. Check out our YouTube channel 360 on History and of course join us on all the social media. Today we are going to talk about Neptune, the real blue planet. So the solar system of which our planet Earth is a part is a real wonder. We all know that. It is not particularly special in terms of the physical properties of the cosmic bodies within it. All the planets orbit a nondescript average star in a nondescript arm of the nondescript Milky Way galaxy. But our solar system is special because on one planet, life abounds and one creature, us, has obtained enough consciousness to look up at the sky and wonder what is out there. We know that there are eight planets that orbit a star as well as countless rocky asteroids and icy comets that circle the sun from very far away. Uh, the nearest planets to the sun are the rocky ones, Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars, followed by Jupiter and Saturn, the gas giants. And then, of course, we have the ice giants that almost touch the Kuiper belt, that holds the icy comets uh, mentioned earlier. One of these ice giants is Neptune, and the other one is Uranus. Neptune is the eighth and farthest planet from the Sun and the fourth largest in the solar system. This world, whipped by a supersonic winds, is the only planet in the solar system not visible to the naked eye. This dark, cold world is almost 30 times as far away from the Sun as Earth and this means that its orbit is very, very long. So much so, that it was only in 2011 that Neptune completed its first 165-year orbit since its discovery in 1846. And because of this distance, high noon on Neptune would seem like dim twilight to us. The warm light we see here on Earth is roughly 900 times as bright as sunlight on Nep Neptune. So, Let's talk about its discovery. Neptune's existence was first predicted by two mathematicians, Urbain Le Verrier in France and John Couch Adams in England. By analyzing discrepancies in the orbit of Uranus, they independently calculated the position of a yet-to-be-discovered planet. These calculations led German astronomer Johann Gottfried Galle to turn his telescope towards the predicted region and on September 23, 1846, he spotted the elusive Neptune. However, centuries before Neptune's official discovery, Galileo's meticulous telescope observations of December 28, 1612 and January 27, 1613 unknowingly documented the planet's position, though he believed, believed it to be a fixed star near Jupiter. And this is why Galileo is not credited with its discovery, basically because he thought it was a star and not a planet. Roman mythology provided the inspiration for Neptune's name, as suggested by Le Verrier. The Roman god of the sea, Neptune, was the counterpart of the Greek god Poseidon. And this choice was fitting considering the planet's deep blue color and immense distance which is reminiscent of the vast and mysterious ocean depths. It was basically a symbolic nod to the unknown, a world waiting to be explored. Now, in terms of size and distance, Neptune is a true giant, boasting a diameter nearly four times that of Earth. With a mass 17 times Earth's, it ranks as the fourth largest planet in a solar system and the third most massive. But despite its sheer size, uh, Neptune's distance from the Sun makes it a lonely outpost. At an average distance of 4.5 billion kilometers, it receives only about 40% of the sunlight that reaches the Earth. This translates to a very frigid surface temperature of around minus 214 degrees Celsius, making it one of the coldest planets in our solar system. Seriously, I can't even imagine that kind of temperature. 
Now, Neptune's uh, journey around the sun, that is its orbit, is a slow one. It takes the planet a whopping 165 Earth years to complete a single orbit, meaning a year on Neptune is equal to 165 years on Earth. And its rotation is equally leisurely, with a single day on Neptune lasting about 16 Earth hours. Wow! This sluggish spin contributes to the planet's distinctive banded appearance, as atmospheric features have ample time to develop and persist. Like all the other planets in our solar system, Neptune isn't alone. It is accompanied by a retinue of 14 known moons, each named after figures from Greek and Roman mythology. The largest and most famous of these is Triton, a frozen world that stands out for its retrograde orbit, meaning that it orbits Neptune in the opposite direction of the planet's rotation. This suggests that it may once have been an independent object that Neptune captured. How cool is that? Triton is also the only moon in our solar system to have active geysers erupting with ice and nitrogen, which were actually spotted by the Voyager 2 spacecraft, the only human-made spacecraft to reach Neptune. Triton was discovered on October 10, 1846 by William Lassell just 17 days after Johann Gottfried Gale discovered the planet. Now, adding to Neptune's allure are, are its faint, dusty rings. Unlike the bright and prominent rings of Saturn, Neptune's rings are very wispy and barely visible, even from powerful telescopes. They are composed of microscopic particles of ice and dust, and their existence hints at a complex and dynamic interplay of forces within the Neptunian system. Now, like the rest of our solar system, Neptune was born 4.5 billion years ago, coalescing from swirling gas and dust, at which time it was likely closer to the sun than its current icy home, just like Uranus. Over time, it migrated outwards. Neptune is also a layered marvel, and 80% or more of the planet's mass is made up of a hot, dense fluid of icy materials comprising of water, methane and ammonia, above a small rocky core. Of the giant planets, Neptune is the densest. And under the frozen surface, scientists suspect an ocean of super-hot water, which does not boil away because incredibly high pressure keeps it locked inside. Neptune has no solid surface, and its gas-rich atmosphere, made up uh, mostly of hydrogen, helium and methane, extends to great depths and blends seamlessly into a deeper layer of melted ices, eventually reaching a rocky core, which is as massive as Earth. The air on this icy planet is a hydrogen-helium cocktail with a little bit of methane. This methane gives Uranus its blue-green hue. But Neptune has a secret ingredient, which gives it a much deeper, more vibrant blue color. What is this ingredient? We do not know. Neptune is our solar system's windiest world. Even though it is so far away from the sun, its winds reach hurricane-like speeds three times stronger than Jupiter's and a staggering nine times stronger than Earth's mightiest winds. These superstorms fling frozen methane clouds across the planet at supersonic speed more than 1200 miles per hour or 2000 kilometers per hour. To compare, Earth's most powerful winds hit only about 250 miles or 400 kilometers Per hour. In 1989, Neptune's southern hemisphere housed a colossal storm called the Great Dark Spot, which was big enough to swallow Earth whole. This soon vanished, however, leaving behind a legacy of ever-evolving weather patterns. But new storms have appeared on different parts of the planet over the years. Unlike Earth, Neptune's magnetic field isn't neatly aligned with its rotation, tipped over by about 47 degrees compared with the planet's rotation axis. 
This tilt creates a dynamic and complex magnetosphere 27 times stronger than Earth. Like Uranus, whose magnetic axis is tilted about 60 degrees from the axis of rotation, Neptune's magnetosphere undergoes wild variations during each rotation because of this misalignment. Now, the study of Neptune continues to unravel the secrets of the outer solar system. Spacecraft like Voyager 2 have provided invaluable data and stunning images of the planet. And the advent of the Hubble Space Telescope, large ground-based telescopes and now the James Webb Telescope have all allowed for additional detailed observations from afar. But much still remains unknown, from the sources of its internal heat to the possibility of hidden oceans beneath its icy surface. Neptune is still a mystery to us, so let's hope we can soon send a spacecraft to visit it. Thank you for joining me on 360 on History and I'll see you again in the next podcast.